so we're gonna look at some single ion monitoring data so from our full scan data we created a method using the qualifier ions um, in our uh, for our different analytes so um, you'll see in this case we created a acetic acid um, TMS derivative method where we're only looking for 75 and 117 ions we also doing this for uh, propionic acid, the one we worked with yesterday, a 131.75 ion, and then for butyric acid, we have three different qualifier or a quantifier ion and two different qualifier ions. So this is all information we kind of gathered from the NIST database, and by doing that full scan analysis, pulling out those extracted ion chromatograms to see where our peaks are eluting, then we created time segments where the mass spec is only looking for particular ions so it's a selected ion monitoring approach and everything else is ignored so you can still see there, there's some other peaks um, potentially from the derivatization agent um, that do come up and now we take this information and build it into a quant method so i'm going to start a quant method by uh, opening the quantitative analysis And then from there we can build in um, qualifier ions and then ensure there's good um, qualifier ion quantifier ion ratios as well. So I'm going to create a new batch in my SimData folder and importing all the samples in that folder. So from here on I'm going to use one of the standards and I'm going to go method, a new method from some data. And this is where I use my standard, sorry. And this might take a, take a while, we'll see how quickly, that's easy enough. It's, it's then incorporated all the some data method. So I said new method from acquired some data. We could do it manually, but um, there, there are other options of importing compound information. So just looking at these for compound 1, um, we know our quantifier ion is 117 and um, for acetic acid. So I'm going to just remove this compound and then make sure we've got some data for 117, which is our quantifier for acetic acid, 131, which is for propionic acid, and then 145 for uh, butyric acid. Cool. So acetic acid. TMS derivative Great, now what we can do is just um, systematically go through this menu so the compound setup we've got the qualifier iron um, qualifier iron masses in there we can also the criteria by how it matches we can say um, we can have a close retention time with qualifier ions which sometimes improves the way the software is finding a peak so retention time setup because this is GC data we don't need a very wide window um, we don't expect a lot of drift or matrix uh, interferences for internal standards we haven't built that into the method yet for our qualifiers let's quickly add those So we have 75, and for now the response is 1. For propionic acid, we've got 75 as well. And for butyric acid, we've got two qualifiers. That is 117 and 75. Great. So let's validate this method, see if there's any errors. And it looks like there is an error, just probably because I've added concentration level. So we can just delete this concentration level, validate it again, and then we can analyze the batch. A 
Okay, so we can first look at our standard uh, to get a gauge of what the qualifier iron ratios are here. Yeah? So for our standards, this standard was a full scan data. I'm just going to remove this sample from the batch. So for this standard, that's our um, qualifier iron, that's our uh, quantifier iron, that's our qualifier iron. And while we're here, we can look for consistency between the different analytes. So for acetic acid, for propionic acid, we see there is a peak um, and there's a ratio, but we'll normalize these to, to make it look better. And then also for butyric acid. So let's update our qualifier iron ratios for all of these analytes. And then we can reanalyze this batch. And now for our standard, we see there's qualifier and quantifier and ratios, and that should be consistent whenever we've um, w we've got a, a hit or a, a potential in our samples. So going back to acetic acid, which is um, uh, prominent in these samples, we can see the quali quantifier qualifier iron ratios kind of stay similar. Again, you would evaluate this with QCs throughout the batch. So for this case, um, we do see a peak. We see in our, some of our serum samples, we do see a peak. The retention time is consistent. Sometimes you do get flags um, where your qualifier peak uh, hasn't been found. So sometimes there's a little bit of manual intervention required. Um, and this is probably for a different analyte as well. So it tells you globally um, how this sample is um, has been flagged or not. The um, So we can see here for the serum spikes where uh, there's been the addition of our acetic acid, propionic acid and butyric acid, we can see the qualifier iron ratios are okay at this level. When we go over to the serum spike for propionic acid, we can see, yes, there's a slight deviation and it could be related to this, um, how this qualifier iron is, is being integrated. So we can either say manually integrated or uh, allow the automated integration to take hold. Um, in this case, we can see the qualifier iron in our uh, second plasma spike. So potentially there's a difference between the cleanup uh, in plasma and serum. The third spike or the third analyte be spiked in is butyric acid. And here we can also see a slight deviation in the third um, 75 qualifier iron. The uh, it and it looks like there's a lot of background, but so potentially this is a, a better gauge to to go by is that that 117 qual qualifier iron. So that's just to give you an idea how to deal with importing of some data into um, uh, first looking at it briefly in qual and then into quant and how we build it into a method.